nothing but the dog in me. Good evening and welcome to Pound Posse Presents. It's another uh, nice Saturday night. Uh, not too hot, a little cool, feels good. Um, you know, summer's getting by us. We're already in August. It's hard to believe. It's certainly been an eventful week uh, for me. Uh, a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes trying to help animals and a lot of stuff going on um, <laughs> with my car again personally this week. It's been great. Uh, but I just want to give a quick thanks to my friend Kim who helped me out, one of the guys at work who helped me out, Pablo, and uh, a couple of guys at a local business, Mike and Mike, uh, business shall remain unnamed, but they were, they were Cracker Jack. They had me in and out, helped me out. Uh, I'm rolling again, nice and quietly. It's never a good thing when your muffler hits the ground and you're dragging it. That's just all I'm gonna say. But uh, yeah, it was certainly an interesting week on that front. Uh, so that aside, there's more good news, but here this time in the dog world. Zach, can we get the picture, uh, the poster of Bridget up? Some of you may be familiar with uh, the search for Bridget. Bridget has been out on her own for almost three years. She dug out under her fence, uh, I believe it says the Sunday after Thanksgiving, uh, in 2011 and this was in Littleton Massachusetts she's been caught on camera there have been sightings uh, there's unfortunately been nothing close enough to try to to actually I mean, there's just been nothing productive they haven't been able to catch her and unfortunately uh, her owner Pat Panic has been fighting zoning laws about hanging signs for lost animals uh, pretty much her signs go up, they get taken down, her signs go up, she's getting in trouble with the law. Uh, it's just been an incredible nightmare for her. I mean, it's bad enough you've lost your animal, and it's the biggest and best way to network that animal home is to go and post your signs. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it's, it, they, she just hasn't been able to do it, and it's been a nightmare for her. Uh, everything she's tried to do has had to be without one of the biggest pieces of um, the one of the best tools that there are out there. And of course, she has remained committed to finding Bridget. And unfortunately, like every other lost animal, every day on the street, that animal's life is in danger. So it really, it, the, this not in my backyard mentality of these lawmakers, uh, it, it, it's just, it's prohibitive, it's dangerous, it's not fair. Uh, you know, a sign is not a terrible thing, and you know, it just puts all lost pets in the area at risk. Uh, there have been petitions uh, that Pat has started to try to change the law, and um, she's doing everything she can, not just to find her dog, but to make it better for everybody else. There have been months now without a trace or a credible sighting. But uh, July 31st, a man says that she was 10 feet away from him and he was sure it was her, and that was in Waltham, Mass. Now, that's huge. You know, when a dog hasn't been seen for months, you start, to, you start to wonder. You start to question, you know, is the dog still out there? Did something happen? Because uh, there's a lot that can happen. And uh, big dog, little dog, it doesn't matter. The longer they're out there, every day is a threat to that dog's life. So I know that Pat is over the moon that there was, you know, a credible sighting. So that's, that's really, it, it may not sound like a lot, but it's awesome news to know that she is still out there and to know, that where, to know where she is, especially with all the red tape that she's been going through trying to spread the awareness. I mean, how many people must have seen her? And because they didn't have a poster in their head to relate it to, uh, had no idea, didn't know who to call, didn't know what to do, just thought it was like another dog out there. Who knows, could have thought it was not even a dog. I mean, a husky looks enough like a coyote from a distance, you know? So I'm really, really happy that, that this, this has come about. And if you haven't been following the page, the page is right up there on the top, Help, Brid Help Bring Bridget Home on Facebook. And if you're in the area, 
and can help out. I'm sure Pat would help, would, would love your help. Uh, the number is posted right there, 978-853-4087. Uh, if you want to follow her story, it, it's, you know, it's been a really long, sad process and you re your heart breaks for this woman. All she wants is her dog home and she's meeting all these obstacles. And to finally have, after months of nothing, you know, like I said, she's been seen on camera. She's, there's been pictures, you know, they've, they've tried to set up feeding stations and traps and it, it just, there's been nothing productive yet. And to know after a quiet time that there, there's a targeted area for her, that's, that's huge. So I certainly wish the Bridget team and Pat uh, the best in trying to pursue this lead because it would be really nice after almost three years uh, to see this dog home, the poor thing. Um, I, I just, I can't imagine being a lost animal or having a lost animal. That's got to be one of the worst feelings in the world, the worst and most helpless feelings that there could be. Uh, more good news, uh, Diesel, if we could have the picture of Diesel up, uh, one of my birthday dogs from the Yonkers Animal Shelter, oh, Zach. Zach? Anybody home? <laughs> We're looking for Diesel. Nope, there we go. <laughs> we, we, we've got um, some interesting things going on in the booth tonight. And uh, we're, we're, we're actually showing someone new, uh, introducing someone new to the board and uh, hoping that perhaps we have a new team member. Uh, but anyway, Diesel from Yonkers, one of my birthday dogs, has been adopted. So that's a beautiful thing. Uh, there are still more birthday dogs. Now only two of them have been adopted, and that's Harry and Diesel. So I'm sure we can do better than that. And if everybody would check out the Pound Posse Presents page on Facebook, it would be a great thing if you could share that article and get those birthday dogs in circulation and hope that by the middle of this month or so, we can get them all home. Uh, some of them are, are, on our, uh, are on urgent lists. So, uh, you know, time is of the essence. Uh, and we already saw a picture of Nelson. Let's bring Nelson back into the uh, mix. That beautiful boy has also been adopted. There is just something I so love about that face He's got such soulful eyes, and uh, we covered him, I don't know, last week, the week before, a couple weeks ago, something, uh, when he was, you know, listed up for adoption, and uh, he found, yeah, there is, there's definitely a story behind those eyes. He was a dog, I know, that was a repeat visitor at animal control, because his owner, you know, just, he would always get loose, and the last time they picked him up, he never came from. So poor guy was more or less abandoned, and uh, now he's got a new home. So that's, a, that's always, I love the happy stories and you know the forever homes because there's nothing like it. Uh, I will take the camera back momentarily uh, because for some reason I don't have pictures of the next dogs I was gonna say have homes. But if you remember from the Oxford Animal Shelter, the two St. Bernards, Baxter and Bailey, uh, they were actually adopted too, so it's nice to get that follow-up and know that they are home as well. I believe uh, they went to live on a farm, which is a very cool thing uh, for two really big dogs to have, you know, a lot of space uh, and, and, you know, a new pack and a new family and a happily ever after. So we're going to continue with some more adoptable dogs. And the first one I would like to bring up is Bear, if we can have Bear. And look at that face. He just looks like a love. Uh, apparently, he is alone a good 23 hours a day uh, in the pound, which is sad. And this is after being left on his own when his owner moved and couldn't take him with them. Uh, the owner had been going back to feed him every day, but he was tied to a radiator in whatever this place was, that this house or apartment or whatever where they used to live. Uh, they moved, couldn't take him with them, didn't know what to do, I guess, so kind of left him there tied in one place so he wouldn't, I don't know what the fear was of having to tie him there, 
but you know this poor dog hasn't gotten a fair shake uh, clearly and he needs a forever home you know he ended up in the pound he's there alone now pretty much because you know it, it's not uh, not one of those places where there's lots of people and lots of action uh, and he's sweet and he's large and he's playful and he will need training and understanding and you know a strong owner because he is a big boy uh, he's at the Plainville Animal Control. The number there is 860-793-0222, extension 291. 860-793-0222, and that's extension 291 if you're interested in bear. Poor guy, you know, I just, I can't imagine. That's another thing, you know, you're in a cage, you're all by yourself, you've got nobody coming by to visit you. Uh, other than the animal control officers, they posted that there's one person that, you know, will go to see him. But, you know, how alone and unloved in the, you know, world you must feel. Just, that's not cool. That's not a life for a dog. They are pack animals. They love socializing, you know, socializing and interaction with people, if, if not other dogs, definitely people. So, somebody needs to go and brighten up Bear's world and save him from you know, loneliness, which is really what that amounts to. And there's another dog that was brought to my attention. If we can bring Halo up. Halo has been in boarding, and poor Halo, um, her owners can't afford to keep her in boarding anymore. So she really needs a place to go, or her future is, is pretty much uncertain, uh, you know. Is she going to end up in a pound? Are they going to decide to put her down? Uh, which is ridiculous in and of itself. But, you know, we can't focus on that. We have to focus on getting her safe. She is two and a half years old. She's up to date on her vaccinations. She's spayed. She's good with dogs. She's good with people. Um, they don't know how she is with cats, but, you know, that's not the end of the world. You can always... Uh, test her and you know if you don't have a cat then who cares <laughs> you know bottom line uh, is some people have them some people don't and you know this could be the perfect dog for someone uh, with all her good qualities I mean she loves to go for walks she loves to play she loves to cuddle uh, she just really seems like the perfect family member waiting to happen and if you are interested in Halo or if you know someone who is interested in Halo or you can you know at least foster her so that she's not this it's not this boarding situation going on that would be fabulous if you could call Nikki at 203-745-8385 once again that's Nikki at 203-745-8385 and the next dog that I'd like you guys to take a look at I don't know where they're getting their names this this round um, Hartford always comes up with some good ones. Zach, let's see Amber. Her full name is Amber Borz <laughs> Borzotra. That's like, you know. That's what I always hear it's named. Yeah, that's, I, 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 I don't know where they're getting their names this round, but they always come up with good ones. Anyway, Amber is urgent in Hartford, uh, and she's urgent for Monday, August 4th. Uh, keep in mind, in Hartford, Urgent is truly urgent, and the date that they're due out is their last day, period, if they don't get adopted. Uh, unfortunately, that's the city of Hartford's law that, that's on the books, is they have 10 days, and on the 10th day, if they're not home, they're gone. So she is urgent for Monday. Uh, she is a two-year-old Shih Tzu mix. She weighs about seven pounds. She's been to the vet. Uh, they said she's had some road rash, which I really don't know what that's all about. Um, but yeah, the, the urgent date is Monday. And you know, that's it for her. And I can tell you, she, she looks more Shih Tzu than anything else to me. And I had a Shih Tzu for 17 years. Wow. And I can vouch for the fact that they're fabulous little dogs. And she just looks so sweet to me um, in spite of her little underbite and funk lip there going on and you know she she clearly her her fur is a little bit of an issue but uh, you know my experience with 
a long-haired dog is if you keep it short, you don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly acceptable to keep it short, and it's not a problem. I don't know why she has road rash. Uh, I kind of probably don't want to know why she has road rash, and we'll leave it at that. But if you're looking for a sweet young companion, and really she's a tiny thing at seven pounds, uh, I just, I love her face. It, it, I always get like all melty when I see a Shih Tzu because of my history with them. But City of Hartford Animal Shelter, you can email them for an application, ctshelterdogs at gmail.com. That's ctshelterdogs at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, I think that she'd be a little winner. I really do. Um, I just, I have such a love for the breed. Uh, the next dog we have is Kuro, if I'm saying that right, K-U-R-O. And he is a special needs dog. He urgently needs a safe place to go. Now, his owners had him since he was four months old. He is deaf. So he has spent his, you know, his life with a family that, uh, due to a housing crisis, split up the pack and the family. Now, he lived with, like, I think it said five other canine siblings, and he was put into a new home in a new situation. And, you know, when, when you have a deaf dog, it is a very definite special needs kind of situation because, you know, how do you communicate with your dog? You, you talk to him. And this dog not being able to hear, it's got to be terrifying for him to be in a new situation. And he hasn't been handling it well. So he does need someone with experience with deaf dogs to give him some confidence and to be able to communicate with him. Uh, he's a sweet boy, but he takes time to warm up to strangers. And then all he wants to do is play, cuddle, and kiss. And, you know, typical... Typical old boy there, you know, he looks like he's got some pity in him. Uh, so I'd like to say it's typical of the breed, you know. Um, he's okay with female dogs, but apparently not so much with males. Uh, he's good with older kids, and that's probably, you know, they want, if there's going to be kids, they want older kids, and I get that totally. Because if you've got little ones running around that are going to sneak up on him and startle him, that's not going to be the best situation for him. You know, any dog that gets startled is, you know, it's not, it could be a not good thing. He can't hear. Uh, the world to him is a whole different place. So if you know anyone who has experience with a deaf dog who, you know, can help this poor boy out and, and get him back into the groove of life and, and get, you know, be adjusted into the situation uh, the way he needs to be, that would be great if you would call Diane at 781-706-7564. Once again, that's Diane, 781-706-7564. And that dog is located in Quincy, Mass. So, you know, it's not so far away that it can't be done if you're interested and you're in Connecticut. Uh, or really anywhere, it, to me, it's never too far to drive for love, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it, that's just my spin on things. But that dog is beautiful, and, you know, surely he deserves a chance just like all the rest. I just love his face. But anyway, that's Kuro, and hopefully somebody can step up and get him out of where he is, not because it's a bad situation, but it's not the right situation. And, you know, I'm sure the people meant, well and, and went into it with their full heart but sometimes things just are bigger than what you can handle and don't work out the way you think they can and you know no harm no foul but let's get this dog into a place and settled in uh, where he can be comfortable and you know people understand what he needs and he can understand his people because that's that's kind of a language barrier right there that you know he, he needs to overcome so the next dog that we've got uh, is Wrigley. Now, Wrigley, look at that face. Got to love him. Uh, they're saying he's a Laza Opso. He's young. He was found as a stray. And apparently he was unbelievably matted, so they had to shave him down. And again, just like Amber, you know, it's not a big deal. You, you have a long-haired dog. Just, just 
keep it short. You know, keep it short, it's not a problem. It might st still tangle, but it's so much easier to manage. You know, I had a loss of two. I've never really told Rags' this story, and maybe I'll launch into that for a few minutes at the end uh, if we have time. But he was also found matted beyond belief, and, you know, it just it boggles my mind. You see these pictures out there uh, of these dogs who have clearly been neglected, and if you have ever tried to poke your finger through uh, a, a dog's matted fur and you can't get to skin because it's so matted, uh, you, you just haven't lived. It's, it's unbelievable. But this poor guy, again, found as a stray, shaved down, ready to go, um, looking for love, looking for a new situation. Uh, I'm sure he feels a thousand and one times better than he did. And you can call about Wrigley. He is at Easton Animal Control. And the number there is 203-268-9172. Once again, that's 203-268-9172. And we've got one more dog named Weston. Do we, no, we didn't get, yeah, there we go. I was gonna say, losing my mind. Weston is a youngin. He is about one or two years old. They're calling him a Basset mix. Um, and I guess that's, you know, because of the, his body shape, but, you know, I see, I don't know, I see something else there. Uh, he is a striking dog. I mean, his markings are beautiful. His face is just so handsome. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, yep, they're calling him a Basset mix, so we'll let it go. Uh, Weston is good with dogs. He's good with people. He loves to go on walks. Like I said, he's a young boy, so... You know, he's got his whole life ahead of him as long as someone gives him that chance. And Weston, ironically, is also uh, at the Easton Animal Control. And the Easton Animal Control, once again, can be reached at 203-268-9172. That's 203-268-9172. Now, can we possibly just scroll through the adoptable dogs uh, one time before we take the camera back? Yep, there we go. That's Bear and Halo and Amber. God, I love her little face and her skinny little legs. And Kuro and Wrigley and Weston. So they're all looking for homes, and uh, barring any more unforeseen instances with my computer, I will try to have them all posted uh, on the Pound Posse Presents uh, Facebook page so that you guys can get the links directly. Um, I will take the camera back, and like I said, I will try to have those guys all posted so that you can go right to Pound Posse Presents and click on the links and get any more information that you might like to have. Uh, unfortunately, that's another thing that's been plaguing me is my computer. And, um, you know, I've sort of been in this challenge uh, to post three positive things a day for seven days. And I have the feeling that very soon my positive thing is going to be that I have not yet thrown that thing into the street for all the trouble it's giving me but neither here nor there. <laughs> my, my computer, my phone, my truck, what else can, you know, but let's just throw it all, throw it all into the street and let it go. It's fine, you know, it's, it's just the story of my life right now. But, uh, you know, I was gonna talk about uh, the story of rags. Uh, again, a story I really haven't told on Facebook or I don't think anywhere else, but, you know, years and years ago when I lived in Stanford, I was riding up the street, and here's this, you know, East Main Street in Stanford's a pretty busy place, and here's this, this, this bundle of mats uh, running up the middle of the road, snapping at the cars. I mean, he's literally on the yellow line, snapping at the cars as they go by. I was like, wow. I mean, this was back in the day when there were pay phones. Yes, I'm old. And I, you know, ran to the payphone and I tried to call animal control because, you know, that's the only thing I could think of to do. I, I didn't know now what, you know, I didn't know then what I know now and all that. Um, you know, nobody was interested. 
So of course I turned around and I went back and he had gotten off to the side of the road. He was in like a parking lot of like a convenience store and of course a crowd gathered and you know, who comes busting through but yours truly. Uh, everybody starts deferring to me. I'm like, you know, all right, can someone get him a can of food? Can someone get something to put the food on? Can someone get something to take the food out so that, you know, I'm not sticking my fingers in dog food. Let's try to, you know, lure him somehow. Uh, you know, of course, he had been snapping and growling at everything. He had gone under the back end of a parked car. And I'm like, wow, you know, if he's a biter, this is going to be really great. What are we going to do? Animal control, you know, I, I, a thousand things going through my head. But what I did was I squatted down to his level and I was ready to, 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 to jump if, if, if I had to. But I knew, I mean, the mats were so horrible. They were big, like, dingle balls in front of his eyes. He couldn't even see. No wonder why he was snapping at everything. He had to be hardly afraid. Uh, I reached around behind his head so he couldn't see me, my hand coming, and I just petted his head ever so gently, and he, he made a move towards me, and I braced myself to, 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 you know, to jump because I didn't know if he was going to bite me. Do you know he put his paws up on me and he was trying with his stanky little self to kiss me? He was so happy to have a kind touch. It was, it was just the most amazing, transforming moment for me, and, um, Yes, I lured him into my car and I took him home and I named him Rags, as in Ragabond, and his nickname was Swamp Thing because he stunk like the swamp. Uh, I got him shaved down. It was no small feat because he was horrible about it. Apparently, he had restraint issues. You could bathe him, but you couldn't towel him off. You could take him out in the rain, but you couldn't dry him. Uh, but I did finally get him a home and, you know, he lived happily ever after, and that's my rag story. And, you know, it, it's just, it would have been, even for him, so much easier if someone had kept his hair short. That's all I've got to say about that. Anyway, so we're done, and I'm going to say peace, love, and dogs. Until next time.